going on everyone? Thank you so much for watching today. My name is Savannah and if you're new to the channel, thanks so much for stopping by. Always happy to have you here. We are back in Planet Zoo, uh, building in Pine Mountain Sanctuary again. For those of you that have not caught uh, the first four episodes, this is a collaborative project that I have going on right now with three other content creators. Zoof, Beyond Drew TV, and Estan Wolf are all helping me create this North America Pacific Northwest style park. The first episode is on my channel, but then the other episodes are on the other creators channels. All the links are down in the description below. And there is a playlist on my channel where you can start from episode one and go all through the episodes as they've been released so far. So like I said, this is episode five. And today we are building a bald eagle aviary uh, that also happens to be a walkthrough aviary. Now I know we don't have bald eagles in the game yet, but this is kind of my hopes and dreams, I guess. So I'm putting it in stone here. I'm building them a habitat as an implied habitat. And I'm hoping that if we do see some sort of North America style DLC, that bald eagles will be a part of that. Now I know I'm kind of got my foot in two camps here in the sense of like, I'm hoping for a North North America DLC, but then I'm also hoping for birds. So I don't know quite how accurate I'm going to be, but one can hope, right? We can all have hopes and dreams, and my hopes and dreams involve avian species that just happen to be from North America. So hopefully that is what we will see either in the next DLC or one afterwards, and I can come back to this and actually add real animals to the game. For now, like I said, it is an implied habitat, so we do have some little bald eagle figures that were made by somebody on the workshop and I'm so sorry. Uh, Drew will know because he's the one that sent them to me who they were made by. I actually looked it up shortly before recording this voiceover because I knew I was going to forget and clearly it didn't help. I need to write things down. I'm one of those people that has so much going on in their mind all the time. If things are not written down for me, they just don't happen. They don't happen. I don't remember them. So I constantly have no notepads and pens and little scrap pieces of paper everywhere. Uh, but in this case, I just, I know I didn't write it down. So it's, it's my fault. I should know myself better, but I apologize. They are by somebody on the workshop and they're really, really well done. They're made by all those little gutter pieces and they just, they look great. So we've got some little bald eagles in the aviary itself. And this of course, like I mentioned, is a walkthrough aviary. So for those of you that aren't new to the channel, you might recognize a little bit of the layout style because I did build something similar to this in Sakura Zoo before we lost it to the crashes we built a binturong habitat that was kind of these two circles put together. This one's a little bit different in the sense that the circles are kind of overlapped with one another instead of right next to each other and conjoined by a little hallway area. Um, but also we didn't have mesh fence pieces when I built the previous one and we do now. So I'm able to use those in this build so that the complete outside is all chain link fence and then there's a section in the middle that's completely deleted uh, so that people can walk through. Overall, I'm really happy about this. I was going for kind of like log cabiny rustic kind of feel and just kind of going with a pattern that I looked thought looked cool. Um, I was really happy with how, if you can see here doing the chain link fence on the top, it took me a couple tries to figure it out, but because of the thickness of the logs that I'm using for framing, I was actually able to get the chain link to go all the way up to the tippy top of the aviary, which is awesome. Um, in hindsight, it probably should have some sort of like hard shelter or something like that, but we'll just pretend that the birds are out during the day and put in the back stage area at night or when weather is bad or something like that, that this is just their exhibit area. It's not where they spend their entire life. Now that I've completed the main section of the aviary, you can see here that I'm just duplicating it over and making a second one. Very easy and simple in the sense of, you know, I kind of did the hard work in the first one with the mud pillar in the center to make sure the rotational symmetry was going to be nice and, and play nice. Uh, it was going to work out 
out and then kind of just going back through and deleting a lot of these logs that ended up being like right where the guests would walk by. I also thought it looked a little bit too busy if I was gonna leave this pattern in the second one. Um, so I opted to have the bottom of the second one just be plain. We do end up going back and adding doors, so don't worry, there are going to be uh, ways for the guests to enter. But as I mentioned in the beginning, I wanted this to be walkthrough and I also kind of wanted it to be a cliffside aviary. So with Pine Mountain Sanctuary, I'm really wanting to have a lot of terrain uh, differences, lots of elevation, lots of, um, yeah, just lots of differences in height uh, so that you get these really cool sight lines and not everything is super flat. My original idea was to have it, um, you enter from the top and then can walk through all the way to the bottom, but I did not want to make the aviary super huge and the paths just weren't going to cooperate with me. At least they weren't going to cooperate and be like a normal incline or decline. They were going to be like 45 degree declines and I didn't want it to look like the, the guests were going to hike up a wall uh, in order to get to the upper part and the lower part. So it ends up just being that guests can walk through the bottom area Area, and then if they want to, they can also walk through the top, which is kind of cool. Um, so if guests are going up to the top area, which is going to have other habitats up there, it's just a different part of the zoo. So it, it just depends on where they're walking and they can kind of stop off and walk inside and see different parts of the habitat uh, dependent on where the birds are. So I thought that ended up being okay using the mulch path thing because this is going to be uh, kind of a naturalistic um, uh, path. And I was originally going to use this fence here that I end up using almost everywhere uh, is one that Zoof made in his previous episode. And I absolutely love it. It fits perfectly with what I was trying to do. And I was originally going to use this as a, um, a fence line or railings rather on the upper part, uh, the upper area where guests can walk through. But then I realized that that mulch pathing actually has a really cool log cabin -y texture, no, not texture, pattern <laughs> look to it um, and kind of fits perfectly. So I end up using the in-game railings, which I don't do very often. To be honest, I probably should play with them a little bit more. Uh, but I just totally forget that they're even there because I don't tend to, to play with raised paths at all. But anyway, now that the main structure of the aviary is done, we are on to lots and lots and lots of plants and foliage and rocks. Uh, of course, just the normal uh, as per usual with the foliage and the detailing and all that kind of stuff. I really wanted to make it so the eagles had places to perch on the inside of the aviary. Um, so I end up uh, actually replacing that tree with a rock so that the dead tree can lean on it. Um, but also wanted it to have a little bit of greenery uh, too as well. So I was actually having a hard time finding some trees that actually fit in uh, the aviary without sticking too much through the top of the aviary. A little bit was okay because, you know, it is a chain link fence. So I would imagine some of the trees and leaves could potentially grow slash poke through the top, but I didn't want it to be too much. Like I didn't want to have like a whole half of a tree growing through the top of the roof. Um, but yeah, so just kind of making a backdrop all around. I end up raising the train even higher on the back to give it more of that kind of cliff look. And overall, I'm really, really happy with kind of how the end result comes out. I really hope that we end up getting birds. And it, you know, as much as I hope that it's going to be bald eagles, if it's not bald eagles and it's just some other type of bird, I really hope I'm able to kind of retrofit this habitat to have real birds in it. Uh, let's cross our fingers and hope, right? I really, really hope. Um, while we're finishing up some of the detailing, I do want to talk about a couple little updates that I have been working very hard on uh, in regards to the channel. So if you take a look down in the description below, you'll see that the description is completely redone, which took me longer than I care to admit, but all the links have been updated and new things have been added. Specifically, the first new thing that's added on there is a link to simplysavannagaming.com, which is our brand new website. This is something that I have been working on for a little while now and I'm super excited to finally have it done and published and be able to share it with you guys. On the website, you'll be able to find things like a little bit about me, some of my featured content, um, and more specifically, something that I get asked about 
all the time in that uh, the gear that I use. So the computer that I use, the monitors that I have, and the mic that I'm currently using. I've listed out all of those on the website as well as links to where you can purchase those. Now do know that all the links are going to be affiliate links. So the channel does get a very small kickback when you do make purchases using those links. So if you do purchase using them, thank you so much. I very much appreciate the support, uh, but did want to add that little disclaimer in there. Um, other than that, there's not too much else on the website other than a way to contact me. I'll be adding it, uh, adding to it rather a little bit more as we go and any ideas and suggestions are always, always welcome. But I'm very happy with how it turned out and very excited to share it with you guys. So go ahead and check it out and let me know what you think. Talking about my gear, I have also added those links in the description down below as well. So you'll be able to find links to my computer, my mouse, my mic, and my monitors um, all on Amazon. And again, those are affiliate links. So they're there for you to check out because uh, I get asked that all the time and I'm so bad about remembering what I'm actually using. So bad. <laughs> I should be better at it, but I'm not. Um, so I figured I would write it down, have them there. And that way, when people ask, I can direct them there because it's already written down. How smart is that? <laughs> I'm learning. I'm getting better at this whole content creation thing. It's fantastic. Anyway, the other thing that's down there that you might notice that doesn't actually have a link to it yet is some Simply Savannah merch. So this is still a work in progress, but coming very, very soon. I have included the little um, title down in the description just as a placeholder because that's where the link will be, but I don't have it finished quite yet. But exciting things to look forward to. So that is all coming soon to the channel channel and I'm super, super excited. I was just talking about uh, this with Drew and Estan the other day as well, is that we're kind of in a little bit of a slow area with games right now. The end of summer kind of always tends to be a little bit slow as we kind of wait and gear up for the holiday season. And so I've been using this kind of downtime or slow time, however you want to phrase it, uh, to really get my channel prepared. Um, the very last thing I want to mention, which might have been the most obvious thing is that uh, I've done a little bit of rebranding in the sense of I have updated the channel banner uh, to add some bananas to it. You guys have loved the little banana theme that we have going on and I figured why the hell not? Why don't we just fully embrace the banana style of the channel and just add them right there on our YouTube banner? So go ahead and let me know what you think about that as well. I'm very happy with it. Uh, just a little, I, I'm on, I call it subtle, but it's not really subtle. There are, there are bananas on our banner, <laughs> bananas and, and leaves. So it is now a part of who we are. Uh, and of course, as always, the name of our lovely members, the Banana Bunch. Um, and so, yeah, so I figured we would just kind of go for it and fully embrace it. And uh, no turning back now because it's done. So hopefully you guys like it, let me know what you think down below. Back to what we're doing in the video. So we have now added the doors. Uh, I ended up having to adjust something, which is why they get deleted and kind of put back a couple times. Um, but adding some rope on the inside because in aviaries, in zoos, when or walk through habitats for that matter with, with flying things, uh, you have things hanging down that you kind of go through to deter the animals from actually flying out uh, and escaping because I don't have a double door on this one, which normally would be what you would see so that way the animals couldn't escape because there'd always be a door that was closed. But I opted just to add these hanging rope pieces instead. And now we're working on a little bit of a backstage area. This backstage area, much like the habitat, is completely implied where there's nothing inside of it and there's not really too much going on around the outside of it either. Um, but I wanted to make sure it looked like there was somewhere that the keepers could get in rather than just where the guests were going to get in. Um, so I just make this very quick box. That's, I mean, honestly, that's really all it is. I'm using some of the same materials that we used to build in, in other areas of the park. Um, but it's basically just a little rectangle and that's about it, but it gets the job done. It looks nice and yeah, it looks well enough. I guess <laughs> I have been, uh, pressured into some backstage areas for some of my next builds because Zoof and Beyond Drew TV are like building these phenomenal backstage areas. You'll see 
Drew's episode is probably the one that's going to come out next after this one. And I imagine it'll come out sometime on like Wednesday or Thursday this week. Um, but both he and Zoof have this like backstage battle going on where they're building these like really detailed, very realistic, beautiful backstage areas. And I suck at backstage areas. I suck at like the scaling and getting things to look right. And I just, ugh, I'm, I don't know. I just think I'm so bad at them, but these guys are so good at them. And so they've been teasing saying that my next build has to have like a detailed backstage area because they've set the bar so high that I need to try to, uh, to meet it. So we'll see what happens. I don't know if I'll give into the peer pressure or not. Regardless, both of them are building beautiful backstage areas. You can see zooming over to steal some stuff from the Zoof backstage area now. Um, and uh, so hopefully we'll see. I don't know. We'll see how I go. But I made this little, little itty bitty backstage kind of implied area for the bald eagle habitat. That was kind of my attempt to say like, look, I can do it too. But in reality, it's nowhere near what they've built. <laughs> You'll see. Uh, like I said, Drew did just build one that you guys have not seen yet. Uh, Drew is actually a bit of a madman, so you'll see in his build, he got quite a lot of progress done and it looks phenomenal. I can't wait for you guys to see it. Um, but yeah, so this is our very, very humble. It's not trying to be anything it's not. It's uh, dirt pathing back there. It's maybe one of the older habitats in the zoo really taking that low budget feeling to heart. Um, and from here on out, to be honest, it's all trees and all foliage. I found with with this build style, the more trees and the more foliage I've added, the better I think it looks. Um, it's also great for hiding my mistakes. <laughs> little areas in the fencing that don't quite line up right or little areas that I'm not super pleased with. I just throw like a fern down and it hides it. It's fantastic. I don't think I'll ever build like a deserty or a, a low foliage project again, um, or a well-groomed project for that matter, like one where the landscapers go and, and trim all the trees back and stuff like that. No, I'm going like overgrown and foresty from here on out because I can hide the imperfections super easily. I love it. Uh, but with that, you guys, that's the last thing I have for you. We are going to get into some cinematics. So I really hope you enjoyed. Like I said, go ahead and check out all the new fun stuff down in that description. Of course, if you did enjoy the video, do leave a like, hit the subscribe button for more. Always appreciate it because it really does help out the channel. And until next time, I'll talk at you in the next video. Bye!